Esau also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. He didn't just jump into that. Father, what should I do? Go be the high priest. And because of that, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. We're looking at chapter 5, verse 9. Look at verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Please underline the words obey him. I've been traveling around and I find there are people who think they are saved when they are living in disobedience. I found people who think they are born again and they are living in a diametrical opposite thing to what Christ has said. They live in all kinds of sins, all kinds of evil, and they do all kinds of, you know, gymnastics, and they still claim to be members of the body of Christ. And they claim to be ministers in the kingdom of God. Understand, he, because of what he suffered, he provided, he's become the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Then in verse 10, in verse 10, called of God and high priest, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. We divide this to three parts. Look at number one. Number one is the excellent ministry of our high priest. Number two is the exalted minister in the heavenly places. And number three is our expected ministry as the holy priesthood. Look at number one. Number one, the excellent ministry of our high priest, our high priest. What's his ministry? Uh, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. In Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, it says, uh, wherefore he, Christ, he, the Savior, he, our Lord, he, the high priest, he is able also to save them uh, to the uttermost that come unto God by him. We don't come unto God by an angel. We don't come unto God by the founder of our denomination. We don't come unto God on the basis of our title. This is who I am. And then I come to the presence of God and say, God, I'm talking to you. And they don't mention Jesus. They don't go through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only door by which we can get to the Father, by which we can get to heaven. He tells us wherefore he, our Christ, our Savior, our Lord, is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, for such an high priest, Christ, became us, who is holy, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, harmless, that's Christ, you know, in some of the churches and assemblies and fellowships, we uh, fear some people. And it's because of what they say. They say here, if you don't do everything I say, and you are quoting Bible to me, you are quoting Bible to me, you look like you've gone to deeper life. Bible, Bible. If you don't do what I tell you to do, and I place a curse on you, nobody in your country, nobody in any country can get you from there. Now, Christ is not like that. Those who hurt other people, harm other people, curse other people, injure other people, and they pursue them with a kind of power that will destroy their lives, that's not Christ. Look at Christ. Because he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That's our Savior. I will be like him. 
you be like him in Jesus name Look at number two there. Number two there is the exalted minister in the heavenly places. Exalted. Look at Hebrews chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 now. Of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. This is the summary. And this is the logical conclusion. We have such an high priest. And he sat on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. He tells us in verse 6, he says, But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, a more excellent ministry. Now, if you are going to follow up a pattern, and you pick Moses, excellent, not the more excellent ministry. Aaron, excellent, not the more excellent. David, excellent, not the most excellent, not the more excellent. But he, Christ, above angels, above men, above religious people of any generation, any dispensation, now, he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is, not that he was, not that he will be in the future in the millennium, even to this present time, he is the mediator of a better covenant. There are many covenants in the, in the Bible, Abrahamic covenant, this one is a better covenant, Noahic covenant, this one is a better co mosaic covenant. This one is a better co Davidic covenant. This one is a better covenant. A covenant with the children of Israel. But this one, a better covenant. He now, he has obtained a more excellent ministry and is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. We're looking at, uh, at Ephesians chapter 1, looking at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Look at that. We come by conversion, by salvation, by regeneration, by the renewal of our very nature, and it lifts us up in heavenly places, spiritually, heavenly places, as we remain and abide in the heavenly places in Christ, then all the spiritual blessings come. But if we degrade ourselves and we go to earthly places, earthly dungeons, earthly valleys, earthly powers, then you stop the flow of the spiritual blessings in your life. But he, our God, through Christ, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Abide there. Stay with him there, united with Christ. Look at chapter 2 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm looking at verse 6. He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If your seat is absent and you are not sitting together with Christ, learning of Christ, beholding the beauty and the glory of Christ, satisfied in the presence of Christ, your seat is vacant. Where is he? Where is he? It's gone to some backyard power giver. It's not there. Then you're not going to have the ministry he calls us to have. 
but you remain, you abide, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ. You don't deviate to tradition, you don't deviate to idolatry, you don't deviate to any other thing, not even psychology, not the philosophy of men. You abide and remain there and you see together with him in heavenly places, untold, unnumbered blessings, will be yours even this morning in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three. Number three is the expected ministry. As the holy priesthood. Expected ministry. Uh, I was appointed a teacher in school to teach them a particular subject. And they, were, they put me in the class preparing for the WAEC exam. And they had an expectation of me. Another teacher had been there before, but now they said they wanted me. Now, it's not just praise the Lord, I'm a teacher. Praise the Lord, I'm teaching the final classes. They had expectation. You're a medical doctor, and they give you a license to practice. And it's not just, I'm a doctor, I have license to practice the Medical National Association. They have an expectation. And the, and the patients that come, the people that are brought there for you to handle, they have expectation. Heaven has expectation. He put us in the ministry. Whatever the title and whatever the position, there is the expected ministry of the holy priesthood. And to start with, our name, our title, and our description as the holy priesthood. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, and I read from verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, dignified, royal, kingly, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Look at that. Look at the description of the people. And we who are called into the ministry, and we who are members of the body of Christ, there is an expectation, and it's in that, in that verse, chosen generation. There are people who are not chosen. Why? Because they have not responded to the call, call to repentance, call to righteousness, and call to regeneration. Because they have not responded, they are not chosen. It says many are called, but few are chosen. Now we're part of that chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a priesthood that is dignified and uh, honored, royal priesthood that is kingly, and the behavior, the action, the disposition, and the appearance anywhere they can tell is different. When you see a doctor, he dresses like a doctor. He is different. She is different. And when you see four men, they are constructing the road. As you go, nobody needs to point and say that the four men, what their appearance and what they control and what they're standing firm, you can tell that the four men, that's the engineer there, that's the construction person. You can see him there as he talks. He's so looking at the pattern. He's looking at the drawing. And he's doing everything. Everything you can tell and ministers, people should be able to tell in your comportment, in your conduct, in your life, in your character. They should be able to tell royal priesthood and holy nation. You know, somebody is preaching and he said, hey, let, look at me and listen to me. I don't believe in holiness. You are not part of that holy nation. If you are part of that holy nation, you'll not be contradicting your call. You'll not be contradicting the call of Christ upon yourself. It says you're supposed to be a holy nation and you come to tell the public and you come to tell the world that you're not holy and that you don't believe in holiness. You know why they say that? Because, uh, you know, there are some ladies in the congregation there and they've been messing up together and they want to declare openly, lady, don't judge me, I'm still a preacher, I'm still a pastor, I'm still a leader. I 
don't believe in holiness, if you don't quit in that condition, you'll be kind of expelled on the final day. It's called us to be a holy nation, a peculiar people that he should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I pray that this expectation will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28. We're looking at verse 18. It says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Christ, the Father, honored him. Christ, the Father exalted him. Christ, the Father positioned him to be higher than the highest in the whole universe because now he has given him all power, all authority in heaven and in earth. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore. Therefore, because you are with me, I'm with you. And because all power is given unto me, and because no power on earth can bring you down as you stay in the place I put you. Go ye therefore and teach how many nations? All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, teaching them to observe all things, remember, in all nations, to every creature, everyone will preach you, everyone will evangelize, everyone will teach, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Do you know there are preachers who change the message from city to city? Ah, you can preach that in Lagos, but not in Vinny City. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Nigeria, but not in Sierra Leone. Nothing like that. You can preach that in Africa, but not in America. Nothing like that. Teaching them all the nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And if you do that, and lo, I am with you, how often? Always. Always. You know why some people don't preach everything? They know the Lord has taught us in the Bible. When they go to those places, this is on familiar ground. I've never met these people before. And I don't know the people that hold the power and the authority. I don't know what they will do unto me. They don't believe that the Lord of all power, all authority is with them everywhere they go. Anywhere they go, they are searching. Who are the people, the decision makers here? Who are the people, the power holders here? Who are the people, the king makers here? That if I know them, then... I will have freedom once they give me the liberty and the license. The liberty and the license that Christ has given them is not enough. He has given us liberty. He has given us license. Amen. And he says, with that liberty and with that license, is the one that called us. It's the one that is going to judge our ministry on the final day. We don't have to be main pleasers. You know, bow here, bow there, until our back is bent. And we cannot lift up our backs anymore. Because Christ is with us and he is for us and he has commanded us and this is what he expects and this is what we'll judge on the final day teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even 
until the end of the world. Amen. And everybody shout, Amen. Amen. We're coming to point uh, number two now. Number two, the promised prophet with essential message and mandate. The promised prophet, that's Christ. He was promised and then we're told he has the essential message and the essential mandate. We'll divide this to three parts. Number one, the prophecy and the decree concerning Christ. Number two, the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Number three, the preaching of the declarations of Christ. Let's look at number one. Number one, the prophecy and decree concerning Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, reading from verse 18, it says, and I will raise them up a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren, like unto thee, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth. God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Moses, you're like the primary school teacher. And you're beginning the spiritual education of the children of Israel. And everything I've told you, everything I put in your mouth and you declare is at this preliminary level. Now, the higher one, the greater one, the holier one, the, the heavenly one is coming. And when he comes, I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. He's talking about Christ. Look at verse 19. Verse 19 says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which I shall speak in my name. I will require each of him. How do we know that he's talking about Christ? Look at Acts chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 22. And for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, unto me Moses, him shall ye hear in all things. He'll talk about repentance here. He'll talk about restitution here. He'll talk about being born again, regeneration, hear him. He'll talk about righteous life. Except righteousness be a greater than the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. He'll talk about purity of heart. He'll talk about sanctification. Hear ye him. He'll talk about marriage, one man, one wife, until death do us part. I'll put my word in his mouth. Hear him. He'll talk of the harvest. He'll talk of evangelism. Hear ye him. He'll talk about healing. And he will pronounce the healing upon the people. Hear ye him. He'll talk about deliverance. He shall cast out devil. Hear ye him. The totality of everything that he brought. He'll talk about his coming again. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, ye believe in God also. He says in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming. All that he said, we're not picking and choosing. He prophet shall the Lord your God resolve unto you. Of your brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it tells us unto you, first God, having raised up his son, Jesus, he now identified that prophet to come. Having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you. In turning away every one of you 
from his iniquity. Uh, we're looking at uh, number two here. Number two, we're looking at the principles of the doctrines of Christ. He has called us and he says, I am going, but I put you in place as my ambassadors. And what I should have been preaching, go preach. What I should have been doing, go do. What I should have been emphasizing, if I were here on the earth, go and emphasize that anywhere, everywhere you go. And it's giving us the principles of the doctrine of Christ. It says in chapter 6 of Hebrews, reading from verse 1, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, <laughs> what does that mean? Don't preach that again. Don't say that again. It says like a builder laid the foundation now leaving the um, leaving the foundation let's build the walls let's put all the structures and let's go to the roof we cannot be on the foundation every time we're building a sanctuary we're building a house we build the walls and we build the roof we build everything leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ let us go on Unto perfection, unto perfection. That's, that's what the word says. Not laying again the foundation. Now, what are the principles of the doctrine of Christ? Number one, repentance from dead works. What are dead works? The works of a dead man. Dead in sins and trespasses. It's not born again yet. It's not come to life in Christ. And he's dead. All the works he does. He might, you know, give money. He might even preach. He might even pray. He might go to, you know, whatever area and say, I'm delivering people. All the activities, all the actions, all the works, all the efforts of a dead man, their dead works. And he says, we should repent from that. That is the foundation of the doctrine of Christ. And then it says, it, it tells us, and of faith towards God. That's how the foundation believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Only believe, fear not, only believe. And that daughter, that son, that person will be healed. The faith is the foundation. Look at verse 2. It tells us in verse 2, it says, and of the doctrine of baptisms, plural, water baptism, and then Holy Ghost baptism, and baptism in persecution and suffering, or baptism, because he wants you to bear your cross and follow him. He wants you to deny yourself and follow him. And whatever Whatever the suffering, whatever the persecution, it says you are baptized in that baptism that I am baptized with the doctrine of water baptism, spirit baptism, and baptism in persecution. And then it says of laying on of hands. That's not the climax of ministry. That's not the peak of ministry. It's the regular foundation of the doctrine of Christ and of the resurrection of the dead that Christ will come and the dead will be raised incorruptible and that also there will be the rapture that when he comes I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be made alive in a twinkling of an eye in a moment as if you are blinking your eye the trumpet will sound and then the dead will Christ and we who remain alive shall be caught up together with them the rapture the resurrection is part of the doctrine of Christ and the and of eternal judgment. There'll be the white great throne judgment. Some will go to the lake of fire. Those who are not born again, although they are claiming to be born again, those whose lives do not reflect the new birth, the salvation, the regeneration, the change of life. All those people whose names are not found, reaching, kept in the book of life, they go to the lake of fire, but the people who are born again, the people who are living the righteous life, the people who are pure in heart, for they shall see God, then 
They'll go finally to heaven and, we, and be with him forever and ever and ever. Yeah. You'll be there in Jesus' name. It's not talk of mouth, repentance. It's not talk of mouth, restitution. You know what? When I became a Christian and I heard about restitution, there was one thought that always was in my heart. I don't want to do anything that I have to make restitution for, and then I'll find it difficult to make the restitution. You know, challenges will come, trials will come, and situations will come that will make me, the pastor is not here, and my, the members of the church, my friends are not here. I could have done this, but if I do that, eventually, I'll have to make restitution, and I don't want that. I don't want to make, you know, restitution because of the shame it will bring, and therefore, I restrain myself in the spirit of God and by the grace of God that whatever I will not be willing or able to make restitution for, I will not do. You know, when you live by the principle of the doctrine of Christ, it keeps you straight. It keeps you firm. And it makes your life upright. Your life will be upright. Yeah. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. 10. In verse 10 it says, according to the grace of God, everything is by the grace of God. Salvation by the grace of God. Sanctification by the grace of God. Spirit baptism by the grace of God. Service by the grace of God. According to the grace which was the grace of God which was given to me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Have you laid the foundation? The foundation of Christ our Savior, Christ our healer, Christ our sanctifier, Christ our baptizer in the Holy Ghost, Christ the coming King. We laid the foundation. If you are fearful, go for more grace. If you are fidgeting, go for more grace. If you are looking at the faces of people, and you fear the frowns of men. And because of that, you cannot declare the totality of the word of God. Go for grace. All those who have done it before us, they had grace according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. That's Paul the Apostle. He said, I've laid the foundation. But you know, some people, after laying the foundation, they're not in charge anymore. They're not in control anymore. They say, well, others are they're building on the foundation. We have established the foundation of salvation, of sanctification, of the essential, crucial doctrines of the Bible. Whatever they build on is between them and God. Actually, the man is afraid. He's afraid to confront them. My friend, what are you building on the foundation? Are you building another kind of doctrine? First, they cannot say that. They fear people. That's why, because of the fear, they say it's between them and God. Whatever they're doing, I have done my part. Paul, the apostle, said, yes, I've done my part. I laid the foundation. But I examined Titus. What are you doing there? Timothy, what are you doing there? Silas, what are you doing there? And he said, let every man, let every minister take heed how he buildeth thereupon. In verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And verse 12, verse 12 now, if any man builds upon this foundation gold, silver, precious tools, wood, he is trouble. In verse 13, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. Whatever we do, it's not just the action, it's the intention. 
is the attitude is the disposition we have are you angry and therefore you say what you say are you frustrated and then you say what you say are you offended that you are trying to revenge on somebody and you say what you say it's not just the action it's the disposition of heart the attitude of the heart it says for every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is i pray when that reckoning day comes your work was stand. Yeah. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the preaching of the declarations of Christ. The preaching of the declarations of Christ. Here, we need to watch uh, because there are many preachers. In fact, the more wrong they are, the more bold they are. You see, I'm going to tell you this now. You see, take it, put it on record. This one is not in the Bible, but I, prophet so and so, I, preacher so and so, I, apostle so and so, I say, they put themselves at par with Christ. Not only that, above Christ. And they put down and they demolish, and they destroy, and they scatter everything Christ has said, and they put themselves at the final authority. On the day of judgment, you will discover that you cannot be the final authority, and your authority will authorize heaven to kick you out. Because you know, anybody that exalts himself above Christ the Savior. Look at the price the Savior paid. And look at everything he sacrificed. And now he gave us this. And he says, this is what to declare. All the declarations of Christ. And then you come on. You have not been nailed on the cross. You have not said, Father, Father, my God. God, why have you forsaken me? You have not cried, I thirst. You have not suffered anything, anything to the inter inter uh, the, le the, literal or the least uh, suffering of Christ. You have not done that. And now you put yourself, where were you born? Where did you see the Bible? Where did you meet Christ? And now you put yourself above Christ and you tell members of the church and you put them under your bondage and you say, I say, well, everyone forgets about you, we forget about you. Give me a good amen. amen. And Jesus came after resurrection and Jesus came the stone was rolled away and Jesus came and we have an empty tomb there now. Here is the risen Christ and he spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Somebody say amen. amen. You know as we come and go along in ministry me, for example, 50 years ago when the per life was started, many of the people I know now, I didn't know them. I just came and taught the Bible study. And there was no personality. There was no individual man or woman that I would see the face. They were all my students and they were all the people that came to learn from me. But now years have come and gone. Fifty years have come and gone. And I know many people now that I didn't know 50 years ago. But Christ is still number one. And there's no new person I know. There's no new authority I know that I will see because he's there 
I cannot talk. Hold on. I didn't know him a few years ago. And so if he comes there, it's not going to replace Christ. And then I'll say, that lady is there. If I talk about world leaders, and I talk about dressing like the world and looking like the world, and having the attire of a harlot, that lady will be offended. I didn't know her 10 years ago. That doesn't matter to me. I look at Christ. The Christ was appointed, and the Christ was anointed, and the Christ was enlisted, and he says, go and teach all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And that's what we should do every time. Look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things, teaching them to obey all things, teaching them to do all things, teaching them to pray and have the grace to perform all things, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the people of God say another amen. The Lord will be with you. You will not draw back. You will do and say and preach everything Christ has commanded. Hold on, hold on. Look, look up here. It says, and they went forth preaching the word, the Lord confirming the word were signs following. You remember that? That's Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Hold on now. If I go out, I know what Christ has said I should preach to sinners. What Christ has said, I should preach to those who are sick. But then I see some people there and I say, Lord, you have to excuse me today. Because of that man, because of that woman, I cannot say that now. They'll be offended. And this is not my state. And if anything happens, I am here by myself. And so, I deviate from the preaching of Christ. The Lord is not going to confirm the word you preach out of fear. The Lord is not going to confirm what you are saying because you are unbelieving. And you cannot preach the word of Christ. What he will confirm is his word. So, if you want heaven's confirmation, you will say, you will preach, you will declare just what he had given that will declare. And he will be with you every time. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Until the end of the world. Yeah. And know that amen. Yeah. If you believe that, that's exactly what you will do. You know, I wonder, Daniel in Babylon, he would only say and do what the heavenly father wanted him to do. They said, Daniel, that's a lion's den. And you will get there if you don't do what the committee, what they have decided. And you keep on praying unto the God of heaven, lions, who made lions, who made you. God will not allow what he made to destroy what he made. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> you thought, this is like where you are coming from. This is Babylon. That is idol. And that is what we worship here. If you will not bow, if you're not bent, if you say, I'm a man of conviction, a man of courage, and 
this is where I stand. Uh -huh, you stand. But Nebuchadnezzar does not go by that principle or purpose. Like, uh, this is now the, uh, what's it now? The furnace of fire. And he said, King, we're not careful. We're not worried. We're not bothered to answer you in this matter. Go ahead. Go ahead and do what you want to do. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us from the furnace of fire. What? Nobody ever faced Nebuchadnezzar to talk to him face to face like that before. He was angry. And in anger, he said they shall bind those people. And he called the heftiest, strongest men in his kingdom. Cast them there. I'll teach them a lesson. Nebuchadnezzar, heaven will teach you a lesson. And he threw them there. And then all the courts of Babylon that bound them, everything was burnt. Everything of Babylon burnt away from your life. And they stood up. And they were walking in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar never seen anything like that before. Miracle is going to happen to you. That your enemies had never seen before. And then the son of God. The compassionate high priest. He came from heaven. Think about the distance from heaven to earth. He came and he was walking with them. They saw him. I will see him. In my trial, I will see him. In the furnace, I will see him. When the greatest of men, when they come against you and they say, because of con your conviction, here is what you will do. You will not see them, you will see the Lord. Yeah. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was still a kind of fuming and rejoicing in his authority. He says, I have the fire, I have the fury, and I have the purpose. If I want to cast anybody into the fire, there, there, let me go and look at their ashes. Your enemy will never see your ashes. Yeah. And he looked inside there and said, what? These people are doing what nobody had ever done. First of all, they are standing, you will stand. They are walking, you will walk. And then he said, friends come, counselors come, senators come. Did we not cast three men into the fire? They said, yes, O king. He said, I see four men, one. That's Shadrach, two. That's a big bingo. Three, look at that. And then he says, but I see a fourth man. He's the son of God. He came from heaven. And they were walking in the fire. If you want to see the presence of Christ and the companionship of Christ, every time, walk through the fire. The fire that the world is building. And they say, this will stop him. When you hear that information, don't stay at home. Don't lock your door. Get up. I, I didn't even want to go there before. Now that I hear that Nebuchadnezzar is raising up a furnace of fire, I, I like to go and repeat history. I like to go and have that miracle again. I get up and I get there and Christ will be your companion. And he said, Shekhar, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the living God. Ah, you know them now. You know who they are. You know their title now. Servants of the most high God. The living God come forth. And he said, we're well, sorry. Uh, you know, we have to cut our fellowship for the fourth man that came. And he went to heaven and he came forth and he examined them. And he didn't see any mark, any sign of the fire on them. The fire of heaven is in your soul, it's in your body, it's on your tongue. And the fire of the world will never have any place, any hold in your life in Jesus' name. Can I tell you something? After that experience, 
nobody on earth threatened Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with fire anymore. Once you pass through, once you overcome, they thought you will cross, you'll be crushed, you'll clean, you'll cringe, you'll collapse because of the threats of the fire. But once you overcome that, that's the secret. Nobody will threaten you with that fire anymore in Jesus' name. Only once, only once you overcome, go through, go through, go through. And then uh, once you graduate from that class of uh, fretful people, worried people, anxious people, what am I going to do? What, uh, get up. Get through that class. And once you go through that class, you'll not come back to that class again. <laughs> what to do, what to declare, everything in uh, he has called upon to declare, to called us to declare. And he says, even unto the end of the world, he'll be with you in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the precious promises for every member and every minister. We're looking at this under three subtitles. Number one, the exceeding great and precious promises. Number two, the extensive, gracious, and peculiar promises. Number three, the expedient, glorious, and performable promises. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the exceedingly great and precious promises. We're looking at Second Peter chapter one, verse three. Second Peter chapter one. We're reading from verse three, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. How many things? How many things are we given? How many things do you have? All things. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and unto godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. He has called you to glory. Glory you will have. In your family, glory. Or the evangelistic field, glory. In the church ministry, glory. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. How do we live a you know, low level life when we have exceedingly great and precious promises? How do we live fearful lives? Ordinary lives, human lives, how do we live impotent lives when he has given unto us great and precious promises for life, for family, for ministry, for profession, for outside job, for an inside job. He has given us great and precious Promises. How do we live a life that people cannot see? We even have ordinary promises. Not to talk of extraordinary promises. Many people are not living according to the privilege and the promises the Lord has given them, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these promises, these great promises, these precious promises, ye may be partakers of the divine nature. What nature do you have? What nature do you have? Now, look at the sheep. The sheep has its nature. Look at the lion. The lion has his nature. That's why the sheep the lion, they don't act the same way. They don't fear the same thing. They don't tremble for the same thing. The sheep, that's his nature. It trembles. A little thunder there is shaking. Rain is shaking. And another animal comes. Animal like yourself. 
and he's shaking and trembling because he's sheep. But look at the lion, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He shakes for no one. He trembles for no one. He frets for nothing. The lion of the tribe of Judah, he has its nature. And now he has given you to be a partaker of that divine nature. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Well, the nature of the king, the nature of the Lord, and the nature of the lion of the tribe of Judah. What do you fear? How are you fearing? You can't come out. You hear something in the news, you are fretting, you can't come out. Somebody you heard, the threats of somebody, they give a sign that we're here and we're coming. Let them come. You are now having the nature of the lion of the tribe of Judah. You will overcome. You have overcome. Before the test already, the Lord has marked you that you are okay. Yeah. I am okay. I am, okay. I am all right. I am, all right. I am a conqueror. I am, I am more than a conqueror. He gives us the exceedingly great and precious promises. And we have the divine nature. Happiness escaped. The corruption that is the world through loss. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the extensive, gracious, peculiar promises. Extensive. It's not the promises you had. Many years ago when you were saved, there is more. Not the promises you had. Many years ago, you were sanctified. There is more. Not the promises you had. When you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, there is more. Not the promises you had. When you began the ministry, there is more. As the trials and the temptations and the difficulties and they grow higher, you have greater promises. And those promises are sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4. We're looking at verse 20. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not. You look at the promises of God in the Bible. And it, it, it's staggering. It's great. Unbelievable. And yet, like Abraham, you stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief. What he has said, he will do, he will do in your life. He will do in your ministry. And you're not stuck. Yes, I see that promise. Then when you go through fire, you'll not be burnt. And when you go through the flood, you'll not be drowned. He say, because I am with you to uphold you every time. You don't say, yes, I understand. But if something is a fiery more than the fire there, there's no other fire I will go through. I said you will go through. You are not a consumable material. Yeah. You are a constant material. Yeah. And the fire of this world will not burn this conqueror made from heaven in Jesus' name. Yeah. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21. In verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Every promise the Lord has given you from today, he is able also to perform. Yeah. Barren miracle children are coming. Yeah. Fruitless, abundant fruit coming. Weak strength is coming. Blind, I don't even mean only uh, just physical blindness. The Lord will open your eyes. See success in front of you. Am I talking to somebody there today? Success in front of me. In front of me. In front of me. Front of me. He is able also to perform. 
I rejoice with you. Performance in your life in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three is the expedient, glorious, performable promises. Performable promises. The performable promises are the promises God had made and he made to this generation. The generation of believers, the generation of ministers, the generation of true members of the body of Christ. And the Lord said he's going to perform in your life, you will do it in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 35. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence. Here now, you have confidence. Do you have confidence? Yes. That God will do what he said he will do? Do you have confidence that no fire can burn you up? Do you have confidence that everything you lay your hand on, you will, uh, you will have and receive in Jesus' name? Uh -huh. When you go out of the meeting, you don't cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. When you go out there on the field, when you go out there on the road, when you go out there to the people you saw before, and they always shout you down and they always look you down and they always terrify you by their words, by their look then uh, the confidence you had here, <laughs> you see I don't know whether I have confidence now you have, you have, you have you are the one casting it away I will not cast away my confidence I see conquerors before me I see achievers before me I see people who will manifest the confidence of the name of Jesus before me in Jesus' name. Rise up and claim it. Rise up and claim it. Rise up and claim it. You will not cast off your confidence. He is your high priest. He forgives. He cleanses. He sanctifies. He empowers. Remain. Abide. In the heavenly places in Christ. You have a new nature, a new life. He has lifted you up. To search with him. And he has given you confidence that whatsoever you ask, in the name of Jesus will be granted. Cast not away your confidence of faith. Believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In Jesus' name we pray. 
say in Jesus name I pray God will answer me as he answers my pastor my confidence is that God is able to perform every promise he has for me in the world he will do it raise up that hand if you had been defeated before you are no more defeated if you succumbed and fell before God has forgiven your past new life new strength new confidence new power as your days so shall your strength be you will walk straight you will walk in power you will walk in authority the word of your mouth will perform miracles keep up those hands father in the mighty name of Jesus you are no respecter of persons every brother here every sister here everyone here all the promises you have made I pray it will be yes and amen in every life in Jesus name take unbelief away from every heart take cowardice away from every heart take fear of failure away from every heart Lord make everyone a new creature in ministry now a new performer in ministry now a new achiever in ministry now as I speak you follow what wonders wonders in their own lives wonders in their families wonders in the ministry and I pray day by day there will be extension. I pray week after week there will be extension. Months and year after year there will be explosion. Lord, use them as fire brands in Jesus' name. When they go through the fire, it will not burn them. When they go through the rivers, they'll not be drowned. When they go through the army of termites, the house of faith will remain strong and healthy. And I pray, Lord, that the fears of the past, gone. The failures of the past, gone. The poverty of the past, that they could not do everything you wanted them to do. Pass in Jesus' name. A new provision for you. A new prosperity for you. A new performance in your life. This confidence you have here now. You carry the confidence everywhere you go. Lord, confirmation here manifestation here performance for everyone go and conquer in the field that God has called you to you'll come back to the house of God but great unprecedented uncommon testimonies thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus' name we pray. Say, 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 in Jesus' name I pray. Put that hands together.
you will never lose. Amen. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. The servant of the Lord have declared it, so it is confirmed. Amen. Anywhere you go, no fire will touch you. Amen. Let's just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you have done today. Thank you for this minister's conference. We praise you. We adore you. We honor you. Just praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's have a seat briefly. I want to remind you that by the grace of God, the climax of the ministers' conference is tomorrow. And all the ministers who have not been attending, please remind them. Tomorrow, there are some who are in the hall down. And if you don't come on time, you may find yourself in the hall below where the overflow are. So be here on time, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Have a lot of pastors and bishops that walked in when the message has started. We will recognize them by the grace of God tomorrow, but just want you to note that the, His grace, most reverend professor, E.A. Ituma, the Archbishop of Presbyterian Church of Nigeria, is here. <laughs> Sir, can you just wait? God bless you. God bless you. There are so many others, so many. Please, bear with us. The list is quite long. We we'll welcome you tomorrow by the grace of God. Please be here with us. Let's remember tonight the crusade continues at Upper Square. The crusade continues at Upper Square by 5 p.m. And there we we'll welcome every other person. Please let's be there on time, 5 p.m. and invite all other people. Yesterday was so marvelous, and tonight will be greater. Amen. Tomorrow, remember the conclusion of the minister's conference. I believe God. After this minister's conference, power for productivity will be with you. Amen. You'll be more productive. Amen. Thank you so much. If you have not registered, please, uh, they'll give you the card. You just fill it and return. We'll be bringing the meeting to a close right here. And now, by the grace of God, tomorrow is going to be very, very great. God bless you. See you tomorrow. the praises of his people and say how wonderful you are. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, our Father. Thank you for giving us the privilege to gather before your presence this morning. Appreciate him. The psalmist said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Give thanks to the Lord this morning for the privilege to be here this morning. Thank the Lord for the privilege of being called a minister of God. call upon his name concerning this program this morning. Commit the program into his hand. He's a God that does wonders without number. Tell him to meet you at the point of your ministerial need this morning. Are you weak? Are you fainting? Tell the Lord to strengthen you this morning. The scripture says, who is blind as my servant? Ask the Lord to open your eyes to things you have not known or things you have known but you have forgotten. Tell him this morning, Lord, open my eyes. Tell him to teach you so that you will be a blessing to your congregation. Teach me, Lord, so that I will teach my people the truth that is in your world. You need the grace of God to teach the whole truth of the word of God. You need courage. You need boldness. Without looking at faces, ask the Lord this morning, O oh God, more of your grace give to me. More of your wisdom. Give to me, if any man lack wisdom, if any woman of God lacks wisdom, ask and it shall be given unto you. Tell the Lord to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and give you boldness and courage to speak the truth in love without looking at the faces of people. This morning, God has an instrument that he's going to use to bless us, to teach us, to open our eyes of understanding I want you to commit the convener, our father in the law, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, into the hand of the law. More strength from above that the law will give him. Perfect health 
the Lord will grant to him. Unction to function for our benefit this morning. Pray that the Lord will bestow upon him. Pray that his words will not fall to the ground. As the sower sow the seed, pray that the seed of the word of God is going to spread, is going to sow, is going to give out, will fall at a fatal heart and bear fruit in hundredfolds. The Bible says he maketh his angels spirit and his ministers flames of fire. That the fire of the Holy Ghost will be upon our Father in the Lord this morning. That the word that will come out of his mouth will burn like fire. Didn't our heart burn? When he was speaking unto us, that should be our testimony. And it will burn off every false doctrine. The word of God will burn off every carnality. The word of God coming from him will burn off every error. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you. Because you're a God that answered prayers. We have committed this program into your hand. And we believe this morning you will bless all the ministers, not only here at the Alpha location, but globally. None will remain the same after this morning ministration from our Father in the Lord. In Jesus' name. Every form of distraction, take it away from us. We thank you, Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. A louder amen. God bless you. You can have your seat. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. It's another time in the presence of the living God. And time with God is not a waste of time. Please, can we rise on our feet as we worship God? I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will go. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am One more time, I am your own, I am your own, I am your own, till the day you will call, Jesus, I am your own, receive this living sacrifice. 
Bye. 